Hey traders, welcome to the best stock trading course for beginners. If you're new to stock trading and you want to learn the basics and fundamentals to the stock market, then keep watching. Some of the topics and lessons we're gonna teach you here are about stock trading, how the stock market works, how you can make money trading stocks, stock market trading hours, along with an introduction to technical analysis, stock trading strategies, and more. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so when we go live or launch new videos that you won't miss it. Now, what is stock trading? So stock trading refers to the buying and selling of shares in a company. And that means if you wanted to technically own a piece of Apple as a company, you could. A stock share is simply a piece of ownership in that company. Hence, when you buy shares in a company, Technically, you own a small portion of that company. By buying and selling stock shares, you can profit from the increase or decrease in a stock's price. The way stock markets work is stocks and shares are simply traded on exchanges. Some of the most famous exchanges are the New York Stock Exchange, the London Exchange. There are many of them. But when you are trading stocks, you are buying and selling the shares through brokers who are linked to the exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange. So you buy and sell these stock shares from your broker they in turn get them from the exchanges. In terms of how you can make money trading stocks, there are several ways. Number one, you can buy a stock at a lower price and sell it at a higher price. This is one of the most common things that stock traders do. For example, let's say you're a sports fan like I am, and you believe sports betting is going to become big in 2021. You use DraftKings yourself in case you don't know what it is. It's an app that allows you to do sports betting, bet on sports games and all kinds of things. Currently, the stock for DraftKings is trading around $50. So if you want to buy it at 50 and it goes up to 60, you make a profit. In terms of how much profit you can make on your stock trades, the formula is very simple. It's the share price difference times the number of shares. That's how much you make. So going back to our DraftKings example, if you had bought 10 shares at $50 and the price of DraftKings went up to $60, you would make $10 times the number of shares, $10 times 10 shares, that's $100. If you bought 100 shares of DraftKings, then you'd make $10 per share times that 100 shares, which would equal $1,000. Now, if you're wondering how possible it is to make money like this, Consider that DraftKings started the year in 2020 around $9. It ended up at $46 a share. So if you had just bought 100 shares of DraftKings at the start of 2020, by the end of the year, that one stock trade would have made you a $3,700 profit. And that's just one stock. The second way you can make money trading stocks is through dividends. We're not going to cover this too much in detail, but Dividends are simply extra shares in the company gives you for holding their stock. So if you buy their stock and they have a dividend, they will give you extra shares in their company if you hold it for a certain period of time, usually what they call the dividend period. These vary, but they often pay out every quarter, sometimes every half of the year, or sometimes once a year. But a dividend is simply a percentage of the shares they will give you. So if you have a stock that has a 5% dividend, and you have 100 shares of that stock, they will give you an additional five shares, which is 100 shares times 5%, which is five shares. They will give you the, an extra five shares after the dividend closing date. A third way you can make money from trading stocks is by short selling. If you think a stock is going to go down in value, you can short sell the stock, meaning you are speculating that the stock will go down in value. An example of this is in early 2020 when the coronavirus had just hit. We wrote an article in mid to late February about which stocks we thought were going to go down in value. One of those, we felt international travel was going to slow down massively and speculated that airline stocks were going to get hammered. Sure enough, we were right. As stocks like American Airlines, American Airlines went down from like 26 down to nine. Delta went from 55 down to about 19 and United went from $74 down to 24. All of those shares dropped in a matter of weeks. Now, not all stocks can be shorted all right. It's important to understand this, but short selling is another way that you can make money trading stocks. Now that you know the basics of how you can trade stocks and make money from stock trading online, we're going to talk about the stock market hours and trading sessions. Now, there are a lot of stock markets out there, but we'll cover a few 
just so you have an idea. So the New York, which is the one that I trade, this is the main New York or US stock trading session. This is from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. EST or New York time. This is the main trading session in New York. Now there is also London. It's open from 8 a.m. local time in the UK till 4.30 p.m. This is generally considered to be the largest stock market in the UK EU region. The other big one being the DAX, the German DAX. In Australia, the stock market is open from 10 a.m. local time Sydney to 4 p.m. Now, we put their local times in there and we've also put the EST hours in just for your reference, but these are some of the major exchanges throughout the world. Our next lesson is about understanding the stock market and market cap which stands for market capitalization. Market cap is basically the total value of a company based upon the total number of shares times the price per share. So if you were to look at Apple, it has approximately 16.8 billion shares available at around an approximate price of $140 a share. So if you do the math, 16.8 billion times 140 per share gives it a market cap around 2.2, 2.3 trillion. Now it's important to understand regarding market cap that there are various types of market caps and stocks you can trade. So using this guide on the screen, there are generally considered to be six ranges of market cap. The first one or the lowest one being nano cap stocks. These are stocks with less than 50 million in valuation or market cap. Next one is micro, which is 50 to 300 million. Then you have the small caps, which are 300 million to around 2 billion. Mid caps, which are between 2 billion and 10 billion. Large caps, which are between 10 and 300 billion and mega cap stocks like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, all with market capitalizations of 300 billion and above. Now you don't have to really know all of the exact market caps, like it's not super important that you understand those specifically, but it is important to understand how market cap can and often does affect how the stock trades, how the stock moves. For example, one general rule you can rely upon regarding market cap is the greater the market cap, generally the lower the volatility. Volatility simply refers to the ability for the price in the stock to change up or down heavily or not, to move you know, rapidly in price or not. If you think about it, Apple with such a large market cap needs a lot of capital just to move its market cap up significantly. You know, it's worth 2.2, 2.3 trillion, and there's 16.8 billion shares out there. You're gonna need a lot of shares and a lot of money to move it heavily in one direction or another. Whereas you compare it to a slightly lower price stock like DraftKings with less shares and a smaller market cap, it doesn't require as much money and capital to move the price. Hence, it can be more volatile. So a general rule is that the greater the market cap, the more often the lower the volatility. This is why market cap is important because it's helpful to understand what kind of stock you're trading and based on the share price and the market cap and the number of shares available, whether it has a greater propensity for volatility or not. This also means by default that market cap is often correlated to the number of shares available to trade, which is called the float. Stocks like Apple have billions in shares to trade, as we talked about, around 16.8. Hence, it'd be next to impossible to corner a stock like that or own large amounts of the stock available. But going to our DraftKings stock, it only has approximately 390 million shares in total and less than that available to trade, probably only around 30 to 40 million shares. And if we go to a smaller stock like Fubo TV, which is the symbol FUBO, this stock only has 67 million shares in total and likely around six or seven million available. So it's important to understand how smaller stocks have less shares available to trade, which can have implications for how the stock can gain in value or lose in value if there aren't as many shares available to buy or sell. So super important that you just understand this general rule that the larger the market cap, the larger the amount of shares available. Another important point around market cap is to understand the percentage gainers versus losers. Generally, the larger the market cap, the greater the chance the company is profitable. Now, if you think about this, this has to do with it generally having more capital available to generate revenue for its business. Smaller companies by default 
have less capital and are also less established. So if you think about this, it should be pretty intuitive as most new businesses struggle just to survive. Many, you know, don't even make it past the first few years. While established businesses like Apple and Google and Facebook, they have incredible brand value. They have products people know about and they have multiple sources of revenue. Whereas smaller stocks, they tend to lose more than gain because they don't have access to as much capital. They're not, you know, as well known. They have less people spending money in their company. So smaller stocks tend to lose more than gain. If you look at the total number of small stocks that are available in the nano, micro, and small cap market, a huge majority of them will not end the year profitable. Whereas larger cap stocks, they have more capital available. They have a much more established business. They have a greater chance in maintaining value or growing. Now, again, this is a broad generalization. So don't take this to like the nth degree. But the key point is just to get this main idea here that there is a difference in the percentage of gainers and losers based upon the market capitalization. Lastly, there is this lowest price a stock can be valued at to even be on certain exchanges. So for example, in the NASDAQ, they generally would not allow a stock to remain on an exchange if it's less than $1 in value. So it needs to be at least $1 in value or greater. So for penny stock and small cap stock traders, it's helpful to know this because oftentimes you'll see that when small cap stocks start to lose value and get down to that $1 level, they will often kind of hold the line there and sometimes even rock it up. Not always the case, but you will see it that it happens every now and then. The reason being is that because the company doesn't want their stock to be delisted, that would be very bad. It means people can't invest or buy stock in the company if it's removed from the NASDAQ. Or if they can, it makes it much harder to get people buying shares. So what they often do to increase the share price and get away from that line in the sand is they will often buy more shares. And so sometimes this buying will rocket the stock off the $1 line. It's important just to understand this. You won't have to deal with this with larger cap stocks. But when trading smaller cap stocks, there are certain environmental differences that will come into play. Hence, it's important to understand how market cap can affect a stock behavior. Now, before we move on to the next slide, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And while you're at it, give this video a like to show you found it beneficial so we can keep doing free videos like this. It's your likes and you're subscribing to the channel that allows us to do free videos like this for you. Okay, we have a few more key points to cover regarding stock trading, specifically key terms and types of stock trades or orders you can make. When it comes to the stock price, you will often see a price on your stock broker platform. For example, I use Thinkorswim with TD Ameritrade. And when you look up that stock, you'll see two prices. For example, you could see a stock that is valued at say, it'll say 10 or 10.05. These two prices are called the bid and the ask. And the difference between them is called the spread. The reason why there's a difference in price in your broker, like the 10, 1005, is the bottom line is your broker's providing a service. They are allowing you to buy and sell shares as you can't do so directly from the exchanges. So like a business selling any product, they will sell it to you for slightly more than what it costs, and they do that to help cover their costs for providing the service of allowing you to buy and sell stock shares. The bid and the ask, the best way to think about them as these are the implied costs of doing business in essence. So. When you see a price like 10, 10 5, the bid is the lower price. So in this case, 10, that's the bid. And the ask is the higher price at 10 5. If you want to buy a stock, you're going to have to buy it from someone who already owns the stock. Hence, in our example of the 10, 10 5, the lowest price that this person will sell to you for is 10 5. If you are looking to sell the same stock, you will get $10 for it. That spread between 10 and 10.05, that five cents, that is what the broker profits for helping you find a buyer and seller to execute this transaction. Kind of like a real estate broker brings a buyer and a seller and they get a fee for that. This is kind of the same thing. As a general rule regarding the bid and ask spread, the smaller the spread or the difference between the two prices, the better the liquidity or otherwise known as availability of that particular stock. Now there are three ways that you can buy and sell stocks. The the first way that you can buy and sell stocks is what we call a market order. So a market order simply means that you want to buy or sell the stock immediately. Once you hit the button and your broker receives it, it will buy or sell that stock at the current price it has. Now there are advantages to a market order and one of those being that you're going to get filled. You hit that market order, if the shares are there, as soon as the broker gets it, they're gonna fill you. However, there is a disadvantage to the market order, which is that you may not get filled at the last price you see on your platform, because by the time you send the order and your broker gets it, usually that's within milliseconds, especially if you have a good internet, 
but the price can change as stock prices change and move fast. So when your broker gets the order, they're gonna fill you at the price that the next price that they have available. So if the price is 10.05 and you hit it at 10.03, by the time it got to them, it's at 10.05, they're just gonna fill you at that. So the whole point of a market order is that you use these to get filled as quickly as possible. You may not get filled at the price you want exactly, but you're going to get filled. The second type of order is called a limit order. This is where you can buy or sell the stock at a specific price in the future. So for example, Tesla is trading around $840, $850 at the time of this writing. Let's say you wanna buy Tesla if it dips down to 840 flat. So what you can do is you can set a limit order to buy at 840. Now, if Tesla just keeps going up and up and up, price never got down to 840, you're not gonna get filled. But if Tesla gets down to 840, then your limit order will get filled and activated. So it'll send the message to the broker, hey, it's at 840, buy it. And if the shares are available at that price, the broker's gonna fill you. The third type of order is called a stop loss. This is simply an order to close your trade if it goes up or down to a specific price. So let's go back to Tesla. Let's say you own Tesla at 750, you bought it at 750, you're a smart savvy stock trader, and you felt Tesla was gonna go higher. Well, it's currently around $850, you have a fair amount of profit locked in at this point. You have $100 per share. And let's say you feel like, hey, I got $100 locked in. I don't want to own Tesla anymore if it drops to 825. Well, then what you do is you set a stop loss order at 825 for the same number of shares you own. So if or when in the future Tesla gets down to 825, it will close your trade and lock in the profit at that price. Now, there are more nuanced versions and complex order types out there but these are the three most important ones you will be trading. Okay, we've covered a lot of material thus far. We've covered some basics and key points about how the stock market works, how you can make money trading stocks online, market cap, stock trading hours, how to buy and sell stocks. Now that you have these basics down, it's time to start looking at charts. Before we do, I'd suggest grabbing another cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is you're you know, chowing down at this point because we're gonna get in how to read charts. You're gonna learn the basics of technical analysis, how to read trends. So some really juicy material coming up. And if you haven't already, say it again, make sure to hit that like button and give us some love as we put a lot of hours into this video. Just getting to this point, we've put in, my team has put in a lot of hours scripting, PowerPoints, all these things together. It's a lot of work for us. We don't get paid for this. We do this for free. So you hitting the like button, we appreciate it. As the likes and the subscribes, they help us to do more free videos like this. So if you wanna see more free videos like this in the future, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. So now we're gonna introduce you to technical analysis and price action. Okay, so what is technical analysis and price action? Technical analysis can simply be defined as using technical methods to analyze a stock and use information in a chart or in the technicals to predict what is the more probable direction for the stock in the future. Typically, this is done with the chart. And while there are many types of charts, the most common and our preferred method is the candlestick chart, which is what you're seeing in front of you. So those green and red bars you see in front of you that move up or down and they have different shapes, you know, with little wicks or lines on the top or bottom, these candlestick chart, those red and blue bars are called candles. And each one of those represents the stock's movement for a particular amount of time. The stock's price moving over time is what we call price action or just the action or movement of price over time. For now, we're going to focus on some very basics of technical analysis and price action in stock trading starting with candlesticks. Now for reference, you're looking at this candlestick chart right now with those green and red candles being candlesticks, but we're gonna be looking at future charts that are blue or white with a black border. I'll explain later in a future video why I choose to use blue and white candles. Okay, so to break down candlesticks a little bit further, we're going to show you a bullish and bearish candle individually and explain what they mean about the stock's price so you can understand how they work. So you have to understand what candlesticks mean before you can really understand a candlestick chart 
That's why we're just gonna start with an individual candle. Now you can color your candles any colors you want, but typically in most charts, by default, they are going to be green and red. So we'll start off with those. Now this green candle on the left, it represents a bullish move for the stock. And we'll be showing you a red one shortly that will represent a bearish move. But let's say this candle represents a what we call a daily chart. So you're looking at a daily chart. That means each candle you see on the chart equals the stock price's movement over that entire day. Now working with this green candle, since it's a bullish day, that means the stock price went up. There are a couple main parts of the candle that you need to understand, which is the body, which is this boxy part of the candle. And then there's those wicks or little lines to the top and bottom. The body of the candle will represent the open and the close of the stock price for that day. So since it went up, the bottom part of the box or the body is called the opening price, while the top part is the close. And the wicks on top and the bottom what those do is they just represent the highs and lows of that candle or the highs and lows for that particular day. So the bottom wick represents the lowest price for the stock on that day and the top of the candle or wick will represent the highest price for that day. If you look at this candle and you wanna kinda of understand what it really means in terms of that stock's price, what well basically means the stock opened at the bottom of the body there, went a little bit lower, but then at some point in the day it bounced higher, hit the high at the top of the wick, and then close just a little bit off the highs. Moving over to this red candle, this, you know, since it's a red candle, well, we're, we know that it's a bearish candle. That means the stock price went down for the day. So essentially this stock opened and it went a little bit higher. That's that wick on the top. And then some point in the day, it sold off, went all the way down to the bottom of that wick and then bounced a little bit and just closed a little bit off the lows. And so these are the four components. The boxy part is the body and the lines on the top are those are the wicks. The wicks will always represent the top wick or always represent the highest price of the day. And the bottom of the wick pointing down will always represent the lowest price for that particular day. And if it's a bullish candle, it'll be colored that. That means the bottom of the body is the opening price and the top is the closing price. For a bearish candle on the right here, it's just vice versa. The opening price is the top of the body and the closing price is the low of the body. So this is how to read candlesticks. And while it may seem confusing right now, it will become second nature very, very shortly. You eventually look at enough candles and pretty soon it'll just be automatic in your head. You'll just understand it without any sort of thinking. So looking at that chart that we looked at prior, when we look at that one green candle that we pulled out in the middle here, we wanna read this, the stock price opened at the bottom there of the body, went down a little bit, then it rallied higher. And this one has a very small wick at the top. That means that it closed very close to the highs of the day, which is very strong. It's a very strong bullish candle. Now candles, as you can see on this chart, they take many shapes and forms. So don't be too intimidated by it now if it's hard to read them at all. It was for me many, many, two decades ago, to be honest. So looking after, if you know, as soon as you start looking at a few charts, this will become second nature. It won't be that complicated to read at all. Okay, now going a little bit deeper into technical analysis and chart reading, there are three main environments that any chart or candles can move in. And they are simply downtrends, there is a sideways movement or what we often call ranges, and then there are uptrends. And these are very straightforward. These are the only three things that you can really see on any particular chart. Downtrend is very straightforward. That's when the price of that stock is trending downward over time. A sideways or what we call ranging market is when the price is going sideways or stuck, not really going up too high or not really going down too low. It's kind of stuck between a few prices. And an uptrend, simply the opposite of a downtrend. It's the price of a stock appreciating consistently over time. Again, these are the only three technical environments you can be in at any given time. Trends, as we kind of mentioned before, downtrends and uptrends, these are just directional moves where the bulls, which is upward movements, or the bears, where stocks are being sold consistently, that's kind of dominating the stock's price over time. For those of you wondering about the bull and the bear symbolism, it has to do with how those animals attack. A bull with its horns will attack from down to up, so it's attacking upward, hence a bull trend, and a bear will attack with its claws swiping down, hence a bear trend, so that's where that terminology comes from. 
Now diving a little bit deeper into trends, even though trends can have an overall upward or downward direction, they can also have what we call swings in the market where the market swings up or down inside the overall trend. So when you look at this chart, you see that the overall price is climbing over town, but there are individual pullbacks you can see here. So you can see this kind of swing upward here, down and then up and down. And these little upward swings is just something we call trend swings basically. And these highs and lows are are what we call swing highs, like when you have the top of a swing in a bull trend and then it pulls back, that's a swing high. And that pullback and that first pullback in this bull trend, and then it finds a bottom and then rallies higher, that's a swing low. Then it makes a new swing high and then it pulls back a little bit and then it makes another swing low. So very straightforward, just a little bit more nuance to understanding trends. And as we mentioned, we talked about uptrend and downtrend and we gotta go back to ranges now. Range, as we mentioned, is when the price moves in a sideways direction. We call it a range because price is between a high and lower between two prices. In ranges, nobody's really in control of the market between the bulls and the bears. So price just kind of moves sideways for a period of time and eventually it'll break out of that range either to the upside or to the downside. Another key aspect of technical analysis and reading candlestick charts is to understand this concept called support and resistance zones. So support zones, if you think about it, like when you stand on something, it's offering support. You know, I'm in my office right now. If I was to stand up, I'm supported by the floor. I can't break through that. And so that is providing support to me. A support zone in a stock is when the stock is supported at a particular price or zone of prices that bulls just feel like, hey, it's really cheap at this level. We're gonna keep buying it. Anytime it gets down there, we're gonna buy it and then we're gonna send it back up. That is a support zone. You know, it's when bulls feel the stock is cheap. They feel it's a good value they're gonna to continue to buy it because they feel it's valuable at that price, hence it supports it. And a resistance zone is just the opposite. It's a ceiling that is hard for the stock to break through in price. This could be because that buyers don't wanna buy it at this price, it's too expensive, or it could be a combination of that or sellers coming in saying, hey, we feel this stock is expensive at this price, we are gonna sell this stock and therefore provide a temporary ceiling for this stock in terms of price. So these are support and resistance zone, very straightforward. It's just, you gotta think of them kind of like your foreign ceilings in your house, that they provide support or resistance for things to be supported by on the downside or capped in terms of how much they can grow to the upside. Again, these only last for a period of time. Now there is a lot more to learn about technical analysis and price action. This is just to give you the basics and we have a ton of free videos on our YouTube channel, Seconds Guys Trading, about this. But for now, if you're a beginner, you should have a basic foundation in candlestick charts, price action, and technical analysis. Now that we've talked about candlestick charts, we're going to go one step further in your journey on technical analysis, and we're going to share with you stock trading indicators you must use. So indicators are simply mathematical formulas that are represented visually to help indicate more information about a stock, give you more information about stock, potential about what is the most probable or more likely next move up or down in a stock. So if you're going to be trading stocks, then there are two indicators you absolutely must use. The first indicator we're going to talk about is volume. So volume simply refers to the number of shares traded over each candlestick over time. So one of the key reasons why you need to be using volume is it gives you information about the level of interest or lack thereof in a stock. It gives you order flow information. Order flow information or order flow simply means the flow of buying and selling orders that go through the market. So if you buy, you know, a thousand shares of particular stock and it gets activated and that is one person's flow of orders. And that information is important because once you start seeing the buying and selling that's going on, it gives you an idea to the level of interest in the stock, you know, how fast or how slow is it being bought up, how much is being bought up. This is a very powerful information. I mean, think about it. If you like, for example, the PS5, the PlayStation 5 just recently came out, imagine if you could see on the Best Buy store how many people were buying it and how fast they were buying it. That might give you information on hey, I better buy this before it sells out. And it did, it sold out a couple times the first two times it was available on the website. So imagine if you just had that information available, it would give you information on whether you need to buy or sell. The way to think about volume 
is that it's basically, again, representing the number of shares traded for that time. It shows the level of interest or lack thereof, and it gives you potential signals or ideas as to what's going on in the price action. So a good way to imagine volume and why it's important. So imagine you are at a food market, like a farmer's market. I go to food uh, farmer's market in the summer where I live. We buy all kinds of groceries. It's fantastic. So there's all these stands with all these foods and we're kind of like, hmm, which one should we go to? What do we want to buy? And so imagine if you see two food stands side by side, both selling apples. And the stand on the left, they only have two to three clients in front of their booth, while the stand on the right has over 20. Which one are you going to have more interest in? You're going to have more interest in the one that food stand on the right that has more people because it's attracting a lot of interest. This is how you need to think about and understand volume because it's communicating how many traders are watching that stock or actively trading that stock. An increase in volume relative to the last few days or few weeks can often signal a new level of interest in that stock, thus increasing the chances that it's going to go higher or lower. And so there's a lot more we can say about this. We have a free video on our YouTube channel already about this, which you can watch by just clicking on that link and the little pop-up in the top right corner. You click on that, you can learn a lot more about volume. But for now, definitely, if you're going to trade stocks, you want to add the volume indicator to your chart because it will start helping you understand some of these big moves, why they're happening and the timing of it. Super, super important. Okay, so the second indicator you must use while trading is called VWAP. And VWAP stands for Volume Weighted Average Price. And it's giving you some very important information about a stock. So we're going to pop up a chart here in a second, but the way to think about it is it's giving you this average price of the stock over time. It is traditionally considered a benchmark on not just for a day trading indicator, but also for mutual funds that have to buy shares towards the close of a particular stock. They're going to be using VWAP as a benchmark. So how do we use this or how do we think about this? So looking at a chart that's coming up here, VWAP is this gold line that you see, which kind of represents the volume of shares being traded at each price. So if we go back to our food stand example, if you're looking at one food stand that was attracting various interests throughout the day, sometimes being full, sometimes not, you might begin to wonder why. What if you found out that when the food stand was busy, was when the lowest price of the day was being advertised and at the highest price of the day, nobody was there. That would lead you to conclude that the level of interest for the food stand was heavily based upon price. VWAP works in a very similar way, whereby it's measuring the total number of shares traded at a specific price over time. That goal line that you see moving up and down throughout the chart, it's doing so based upon the volume of shares being traded at those prices over time, volume weighted average price. Now there is a lot to cover regarding the VWAP indicator, which we'll save for another day. But for those of you that are really interested in learning more about VWAP and how we use it and how we make trades with it, check out my video on trading the VWAP indicator by clicking on that link and a little pop up in the top right hand corner there. For now, just kind of think of VWAP as representing the average price of that stock over the day. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to stock scanners. In the US stock market, you have over 30,000 stocks to trade. There's no way you can monitor all those stocks. Now, I can't do it. And the good thing is, is that you don't have to. Luckily, there are many free and some paid stock scanners out there that can filter out stocks based upon all kinds of variables like percentage gain on the day, volume traded for the day, average 10 day volume, and so on. I personally use the Benzinga Pro Stock Scanner because I can filter out the big movers for the day based upon percentage gain for the day, volume being traded for that day versus the average 10 day volume. I do that for day trading to find the biggest movers of that day that have strong volume relative to their average. The reason I do that is because the greater the volume plus the greater the percent gain on that day in comparison to the volumes 10 day average, the greater the chance that that stock is going to be a mover. So I have tons of videos on how I use this scanner. I do a live stream pre-market session every Tuesday on my YouTube channel sharing how I scan for stocks that particular day.
Now, it's important to note that Benzinga is a paid service. I use it, I pay for it, and in my opinion, it's worth it. They do not offer discounts if you go through them, but you can get discounts through an affiliate. I am one of them. I only personally recommend products that I use or would use, and I never recommend something that I would never use. So I know I'm sharing this as I value it as a service, not just become an affiliate. I've been using this every single day. If you're interested in learning more about Benzinga Pro and getting a discount, click on the link in the description description below there. For those of you that don't want to pay for a stock scanner, you want to try a free stock scanner, no problem. TradingView, which is these charts that I've been showing you, they have their own free stock scanner, which I'll also leave a link below in the description for so you can sign up for that and get access to their free stock scanner. Now that we've covered stock scanners, it's time to talk about stock trading strategies. So I'm going to share with you a stock trading strategy that I use to make money in the stock market, both as a day trading strategy and as a swing trading strategy. So this strategy is not a complex pattern of find, but it will take some time to master like any skill. With practice, you will get better and then can start using this. You know, once you learn this pattern, you can start using this to make profitable trades. The first stock trading strategy I'm going to teach you is called a breakout setup. So it's a key breakout structure that I look for every single day. This technical pattern helps you to identify potential breakouts in a stock to the upside or the downside. For our purposes, we're only going to concentrate on upside breakouts. So a breakout pattern can often be drawn like this. I'm going to bust up my nice little pen. And the way to look at it is like this. So stock moves up finds resistance, creates a weaker pullback, reattacks that same level or similar area in price as another weaker pullback. And it just continues to press upon this level with all of these rejections getting weaker and weaker, and usually it leads to a breakout. So this is a breakout pattern where the price section builds like this over time. This pattern works on any time frame, so it doesn't matter whether you're a day or swing trader, position trader, this pattern works on any time frame. Now, the reason why this pattern works is because the upside pressure is built by the bulls over time, and it pushes the smart sellers out of the market early while leaving the weak players to defend a level or price. So, you know, as the bulls are going up, sellers defend a certain price, they push it back, but then the bulls reattack it again. And as the sellers start to have weaker and weaker rejections where they don't get as far, they get less far, they get less far, smart sellers are going to see this and they're going to get out. And then you get weaker and weaker rejections. And that's because it's mostly weak players defending a particular level. And eventually they're going to lose control and the bulls are going to stop them out. And then they're just going to push it through a nice breakout. Once price breaks above this level, it trips the player's stops, there's no resistance left and the market can go higher. Now we're going to begin by looking at the following chart where you can see the price section forming this exact same pattern. Okay, so we're looking at Nokia here on the five minute time frame. These blue vertical boxes that you see here, this is the pre market and after market trading hours. So this is pre market leading into the open. The white area is the trading session. And then this is just a few minutes after the market has closed. Now, if you take a look at this chart, can you see the pattern that I had drawn earlier? Take a look and see if you spot it. Okay, here's where it is. You can see this pattern right here and there's your resistance level. Here's your resistance level, pullback. Hits the resistance level again, slightly higher pullback. So this one's here, this one's a little bit higher. Then it kind of pushes up into it, very weak pullback, breaks out and then climbs higher. So there's several reasons why this pattern is effective. Now, if you think about it, with the market in a bull trend, you'll notice it hits its high early in the session. This is a five minute chart. So each candle represents five minutes. So this is the first five minutes on the open. This is the second five minutes. Within 10 minutes, it hits the open. Keep in mind in pre-market, it was already climbing from you know, 415, 420, and it opens right around 450. Well, then within 10 minutes, it goes from 450 to 490. That's basically a 10% gain within 10 minutes. Now, this initial selling, that's sellers coming in, probably some profit taking. But you notice that the pullback is not as strong as the move up. I mean, look how many candles this takes versus a two candle climb here. This pullback is not as strong as this climb up 
telling us that the bulls have really good strength. They're able to move the market fast in a couple candles. And the pullback takes many, many candles just to pull back, you know, about two thirds of the gain over these two candles. So it's telling us where is the greater strength? It's with the bulls. So the market comes back. So after hitting this and pulling back, the market makes a second attempt on this resistance level. And this, you know, where it first sold off here, then it pulls back again. And as we see, not as high or not as low as it did before. That tells us that the bulls are buying this up higher from where they did before. They bought it originally here, now they're buying it up here. Technically the bulls are getting a worse price here, but they're confident that they're able to keep pushing this. And so they buy it at a worse price thinking, hey, we're gonna eventually break through. Then you have this third level here, right at the resistance here, maybe just a little bit above, and just a super weak, pullback here, signifying that there's really no pushback from the bears on this one here. And then right in the aftermarket, as soon as the market closes, boom, pushes right through and then just climbs higher, climbing about 25, 30 cents in a matter of minutes. This is how breakouts work. They find a resistance in the market, which is where the sellers are. They keep attacking that resistance, which weakens over time. Eventually the smart sellers see the breakout forming and they leave early, thus making the defenses weaker. This causes weaker pullbacks, Eventually one side's gonna win, whichever one pushes harder and continues to attack over time, that's the one that wins. In this case is bulls, and this creates a breakout setup that you can profit from. This is how the breakout setup works. Now let me show you another chart with this exact same pattern. Okay, so we're looking at GameStop. This has been one of the biggest meme stocks of 2021. And you can tell, you know, that I, I you know, record this in early January, third week in January. The stock price has gained massively since we recorded this. So what we're looking at here is GameStop on a one hour chart. So that means each candle that you're looking at represents one hour of the stock's price movement. Now, again, take a look at the chart and let me know if you could see the breakout pattern. Take a look. Did you see it? Here it is. Here's your breakout pattern. So very simple and straightforward. And you can see all the same things. We have a bullish move up. We have a resistance level right around here. We have a pullback that is higher than this pullback. So here's a low here. Here's the next pullback. We reattack the same level again. Look at the pullback much weaker or higher up this time. Then we hit it again and we have another weak pullback and then we hit it again and then we just move sideways here. There's no defense from the sellers. They can't even push back at all. And then all of a sudden, boom, rips higher from 45 up to like $67 in minutes. Now, if you had bought this breakout somewhere between 43 and 45, by the first four hours of the next session, just 100 shares, if you had bought 100 shares, you would have profited over $2,000 in a matter of hours. Not bad for a day's work. So again, for this breakout pattern, I would suggest just starting with bullish setups only. And to recap, what you need is an already existing bull trend in place. What you want is at least two rejections off of a resistance level that are really close to each other. And the reason why we want these two rejections is the second rejection really tells us, okay, there's definitely some sellers there. You know, the first time wasn't a fluke. They pushed it back at that same level again. There's clearly some sellers parked there that don't want the price to get past this. So they're defending it. What we also want is weaker rejections. So we want these rejections to continue to build higher over time. That's telling us that the defenses, the sellers in this case, are losing strength over time. And eventually you usually see these things squeeze a little bit and towards the end, and then they just break out. And those breakouts provide really good trade opportunities. This is the basics of a breakout pattern and setup. It is one of my bread and butter strategies. We trade this every week, sometimes multiple times and multiple setups per day. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this breakout pattern, I have an entire video on this. You can check out my video by clicking on the link in the top right hand corner. Now that we've covered a stock trading strategy and pattern, it's time to talk about the sexiest part of trading, risk management. I'm kidding. Risk management is the least sexy part of trading for new people, yet it's one of the most important trading skills you will need to survive and make money trading. So proper risk and money management is 
absolutely crucial in trading, not just in trading, but you run a business or your personal finances. It's important in a lot of aspects of life. You know, are you someone who makes $100,000 a year? You probably shouldn't be buying a $250,000 Lamborghini as the expenses of that car will likely outweigh your ability to pay for it. That has to do with money management. Trading works in a similar way whereby you need to be managing your money and risk on each and every trade. There are several tips we're going to share regarding risk management, so make sure you pay attention to these terms. The first one is called risk to reward ratio. This simply refers to the amount of money that you're going to be risking on this next trade in relationship to how much you could potentially gain. When we trade stocks, we generally have a target or price that we're looking to hit and then close out the trade. This is what we call our take profit level. And it will determine what price you wanna get out and thus how much you can make on the trade. That's the reward aspect of this ratio. If the trade doesn't work out and falls to a certain price, you wanna exit the trade and cut your losses so you don't lose too much on any one trade. This is called your stop loss, as we mentioned earlier in terms of a stop loss order. And it will generally define how much you are risking on this one trade. This is the risk aspect of this ratio. So let's say you're buying XYZ stock at $25 and you wanna take profit at $35, which is a potential $10 gain per share you trade. And if the stock drops to $20, you wanna exit the trade, cut your losses and just move on. That would be a $5 loss per share. So based upon these variables, you're risking $5 per share and looking to gain $10 per share. Using this risk to reward ratio, this would mean you have what we call one to two R to R. It means you're risking $1 for every $2 you stand to gain per share. This is the risk to reward ratio. We'll have a few more examples of this and how this works on the next slide. So the risk to reward ratio, here's some very simple examples. So if you have an R to R of one to two, you could be risking $50 on this trade and your reward is 100, that's what we call a two R or two times your risk. If you're looking to risk $50 and make 150, that would be a one to three risk to reward ratio or what we call a three R trade, three times your risk. And if you're risking $50 and you're looking to potentially gain 200 on this, this would be a one to four risk to reward ratio or what we call a four R trade. This is how the risk to reward ratio works. In the beginning, I'd recommend starting off with a one to two R to R. So this way for every dollar per share that you're risking, you're gonna potentially gain $2 per share on each trade. This is basically, so if you look at the mathematics, if you're 50% accurate, then you're gonna be winning two on $2 per share on 50 trades and losing $1 per share on 50 trades. That mathematically works out to you making money. Now the next risk management technique I want to teach you about is called max risk parameters. The goal of having a max risk per trade per day or per month is just like the best athletes in the world, you're going to experience losses. Tom Brady experienced losses, Patrick Mahomes experienced losses. What you want to do is that when you lose, you wanna minimize your downside. So when you start to win again, it doesn't take you too long to make up for those losses. Max risk parameters are like having guardrails for when you're not at your best so that your losses don't get too big. We recommend having a max risk per trade and max risk per day and a max risk per month. So here are some general guidelines that you can use for your max risk parameters. Per trade, we recommend in the beginning, just starting off with 0.5% per trade. So if you have a $100,000 account, 0.5% would be $500. Just like a beginning archery student, you don't want the target to be too far or you're not gonna hit it. I know, I study archery and traded competitively. So it's super important. Like when I started off, we started off at six meters and then you go down to 12 meters and then you go down to 18 meters. And so very much in trading, you wanna start off small and work your way to bigger targets. 0.5% risk per trade limits your losses in the beginning. As in the beginning, you're gonna have many missed shots in archery. It's the same in trading. You're gonna make mistakes. That means you're probably gonna have more losses. It also means once you start to get some solid feet under you, you'll be able to recover those losses more easily because you're only losing a small amount per trade. So max risk of 0.5% of your account per trade. If you have a 10K account, that would be $50. Now, if you're going to day trade, then we recommend setting your risk at what we call 4R per day or four times your risk. So if you're risking 0.5% per trade, then that would mean that if you lose four trades in a row, then you would hit 2% down for the day. At that point, 
just cut it off and you know come back the next day you're limiting the losses so you're not losing too much in a day and you don't you know if you go off the reservation this is kind of like a guardrail to make sure you don't lose too much in any particular day in terms of a max risk per month no more than eight percent or 16 r so you'd have to lose 16 trades in a row to hit this that's a pretty low probability event as long as you have a good strategy and good skills and good execution in place this is a very low probability event now these max risk parameters per trade per day per month basically means that once you hit that once you hit your daily threshold of two percent or a month of eight percent it means you stop trading you regroup and you come back the next time. These are just two risk and money management techniques that we recommend starting with. There are more to learn besides the risk to reward ratio and the risk thresholds or risk max risk per trade day and month, but this should give you a solid primer to start. Now, while having a strategy and good risk management is key, you also need another critical trading skill that is building a strong mindset and trading psychology. If you think this is important, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen some great high school or college athlete with loads of skill and talent yet never made it in the pros? Now I want you to compare that to Tom Brady, who's about to play in his 10th Super Bowl. He was chosen in the sixth round in the 2000 draft. He was the 199th player chosen in that draft. That means that of all the NFL teams that had chosen players before him, they thought there were 198 better players than him or more valuable to their team than Tom Brady. And yet with a great mindset and a hard work ethic and a constant focus on getting better today, he's become one of the greatest, if not the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL. He's about to go to his 10th Super Bowl this year. Also important to note, there were six quarterbacks that were chosen before Tom Brady in the 2000 draft. How many Super Bowls did those six quarterbacks play in and win? Zero. And yet Tom is about to play in his 10th and he's already won six. Only quarterback in history to ever do that. Now, to compare Tom Brady's stats versus these other six QBs that were picked before him, those six QBs played in a total of 229 games. They had a total of 89 wins amongst all of them combined. They combined for 44,000 passing yards and 246 touchdowns. Tom, by himself, has played in 269 games. He has 230 wins and at the time of this writing has thrown for over 70,000 yards and 517 touchdowns if you watch tom about his interviews about this he said he remembered every one of those quarterbacks that was chosen before him he remembered all of their names and he used that as motivation to show the world hey i'm better than them he wasn't at the time of the draft but by using his mindset and motivation he became better than all of them combined talent alone is not enough to succeed in sports nor is it enough in trading. You have to have trading skills, you have to have risk management skills, and you also need mindset skills. This is the power of trading psychology and mindset. So circling back to trading and your trading psychology and mindset, your trading psychology and mindset will have a huge impact upon your trading performance. And there are several reasons why. One, trading is very different from a normal job. When you get a job and you work for a company, they set the rules, they tell you when you they, you know you need to work, they provide you with the tools, the equipment, they give you a rule book to follow. They also tell you what you're gonna be paid so you know exactly what you're gonna be paid and when. In trading, you only get paid if you make money trading. You only get paid if you have the skills and can execute those skills in a market that is constantly evolving. Hence, instead of getting that fixed paycheck each month, which you then know how much you can spend on food and rent and bills, with trading, you determine how much you make. And yet some of it's not up to you because you have to trade what the market can give you. Instead of something fixed and solid like a job, you won't know how much you're gonna make the next month. And that uncertainty can wreak havoc on the untrained mind. This is why you have to train your mindset to manage your emotions, the challenges and difficult thoughts that are, you are going to experience while trading. So this is one of those things on how trading is very different than a normal job. Trading is also a skill-based endeavor. 
and it requires you to perform very much like a sport. Reading a few books or watching a few vids is not gonna make you a good trader. You're gonna have to practice and build these skills to consistently pull money out of the markets. But if and when you can, you'll realize you have a skill where you can make money from anywhere in the world as long as you have a good internet connection and a workable computer or laptop. Another reason why your mindset is so important is that you have to think in probabilities when you're trading. So in trading, there are very few certainties and almost everything in the markets operates on a scale of probabilities. Meaning when you take your next trade, you do not know whether you're going to win or lose. You have to learn to think in probabilities very much like a professional poker player does. You have to play the probabilities of each and every trade before you take them, weigh the risks, estimate your chance of winning, then execute on something that is never a sure thing. Again, instead of that fixed paycheck, which is 100% probability, you're trading based on a probability of winning. That takes both mindset and emotional skills you're going to have to build. And guess what? None of us, none of us come pre-wired to be great traders. In fact, we have many biases, both psychological and biological, that affect our trading. Now, some of these biases that are going to affect you. One of them is the negativity bias. Negativity bias is something that we're wired with biologically. So as humans, as a species, things that were threatening to us over time became more important to our brain than things that didn't hurt us, things that were beneficial to us. And so we respond and react faster to threat than we do to say a joke or something that's positive for us. This creates a bias in us to heavily react to something negative or perceived as a threat than something as a positive. And that's going to affect you heavy when trading. Loss aversion. So loss aversion, we tend to avoid losses or avoid actions that are going to create losses as much as possible. Some of that's natural intelligence, but some of it is a problem in trading because you can't avoid losses in trading. You do enough trades, you're gonna experience losses. It's unavoidable. The problem is, is that sometimes we will actually take actions. We'll have a perfect setup according to our strategy and our trading plan, and yet maybe because we experienced a big loss on the last trade, we're afraid or averse to experiencing that loss again. So we don't take the next trade and guess what? The next trade becomes a winner. And so that loss aversion now turns into something. Now we're mad at ourselves for not taking our trade. It's the loss aversion like doubly, you know, hits us in a negative way. So loss aversion, a very important bias. Confirmation bias. So we as traders and as people, and you see this in social media that we tend to seek out information which already confirms or reaffirms our current biases or thoughts or political beliefs or whatever. And we tend to do this in trading. We tend to look for charts that don't threaten our idea of what's going on in the markets. Because again, if they start to threaten us, it brings up that negativity bias and it brings up the loss aversion bias. So we tend to look for information that just confirms what we already think instead of looking for information that may challenge us. This is important. And FOMO, fear of missing out. You know, this is pretty straightforward. A lot of us will see a trend. They'll see a stock ripping up higher. And we're like, oh my God, I got it again. I can't, you know, miss this trend. I have to catch this one. And the problem is, is that, you know, we are kind of not really thinking about like, okay, yeah, we don't want to miss out on this, but we also need to look at the risks. And so we're not paying attention to the potential risks on this. You will have to learn to recognize these biases in real time when you're experiencing them and you're still going to have to perform while under that emotional or psychological pressure. Just like an athlete faces mental and emotional pressure, you are going to experience these things in trading. So your ability to build a strong mindset will really be one of the deciding factors whether you make money or not. With that being said, one of the most important mindsets you'll need to succeed is called a growth mindset. This is basically someone who focuses on growth more than anything else. They're willing to forego short-term rewards for a future gain of being able to trade home for a living. They're not worried about losses. This means focusing on improving your skills each and every month. This means also that you don't go negative when you experience a loss, that you experience a loss and you have this inner resilience when things don't go your way, when things aren't perfect. You learn to relate to that, accept it, and move on. It also means focusing on getting better today. 
If you can learn to build a growth mindset, then you'll have a great mindset in place, which will help you become a profitable trader. It's not the only skill you need, but it's an absolutely critical mindset. So we're coming towards the end of this video, but we have some key points to cover from here. Now that you've gone through this video and studied all the material, now is the time to go out there and practice your swing, so to say, or practice your shots. In trading, we don't have a driving range like golfers do to go practice their swing or their short game or middle game or their drivers, but we do have trading simulators. So trading simulators are programs that simulate the market movements and price action of stocks in the past so that you can kind of rewind and play it back and practice your skills as if you're seeing it in real time. This is why we have this process of starting on sim, then demo, then live. If you want to get better at spotting and trading that breakout pattern, practice on a simulator first until you got that down pat. Then when you feel ready to go, get a free demo account and start trading that pattern on a demo account, which is the market moving in real time with fake money. So a demo account, almost all brokers provide that. They'll provide the trading platform, give you access to the charts, the live markets, and they'll give you fake money so you can practice. Only after you've shown you can make money trading on a demo over time should you ever consider risking live money. That's why we recommend the process sim, then demo, then live. Now this one video is not gonna make you a great stock trader. Again, this is a skill that takes time to build, but it's a start. And so we have a lot of ongoing trading and just like an athlete, you need to continually train. I have a YouTube channel called Second Skies Trading where I have a ton of free videos and lessons for you to watch. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up to show you found it beneficial and it was a good intro to stock trading course for you. I also do a live video every Tuesday showing you what I'm stocks I'm looking to trade that day and what my process is. So there's a lot of free content in that. And also once a month, I have a free Q&A video where the first Friday of every month, I go over live charts, trade ideas, and I answer questions from you personally. So tons of reasons to sign up and get a lot of free content and help you become a better stock trader. Now, for those of you that would like to you know, see more about us, we have a website, secondskiesforex.com. We have tons of free articles and videos to hand tools to help you. We also have paid courses for members where we have a members trade setup room. We have live member webinars, access to my live trades Monday through Thursday, live pre-market analysis several days a week. We got a lot going on for the new or experienced trader. And for those of you that want are really serious about trading and really taking stock trading to the next level and getting ongoing feedback and a global community of traders and members sharing their trade setups, that's what the trading masterclass is for. You get access to the member trade setups room, live member webinars once a week, access to my live pre-market video analysis, and you also get access to my trades as well, which I share in our trading channel. So to recap in this video, you've learned what is stock trading. You've learned how it works, how you can make money trading stocks. You've gotten an introduction to price action technical analysis. You've learned about stock trading indicators and scanners and risk management and strange psychology. So we've gone over quite a lot in this course. With that being said, I sincerely hope that this intro to stock trading course, and what I think is the best stock trading course for beginners out there, that this video really helps you get started on your journey to profitable trading. I've had many students become profitable in the last year, with some of them even making over $100,000 in profits. Now, for those of you who do the work and get to that point, you'll find that it's worth it, just like as my students are finding it's worth it. So with that being said, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and sign up for notifications so you'll get notified when we go live. Don't forget to leave a comment on what stock trading topics you'd like to see a video on and what you got out of this course. We read all your comments and we look and we enjoy the feedback from the community. So until that time, have a great day, enjoy, and I hope to be working with you soon.